ओके सर सेशन स्टार्ट करो चालू करे बार नमस्कार मंडली पैलदा सुरुआती मैं एक दोन मिनट मराठी बोलते मैं अपन इंग्लिश वर स्विच स्विच वो कारण जरा टेक्निकल सेशन है तर धन्यवाद हे सेशन जॉइन के बदल धन्यवाद कपिल बंगलोर मराठी टीम तो ये मज टेक्निकल विषय दुसर सेशन है ये आधी डेटा साइंस वर मैं एक सेशन घर तो मी स्वत सीजीआई मन कंपनी है तिथे काम करते सॉफ्ट सीनियर सोल्यूशन आर्किटेक्ट आ डेटा साइंटिस्ट मन तो यह सेशन का उद्देश्य आज है कि आप जे का अनुभव है जे नॉलेज है तो अपने मराठी बधवानसोब शेयर कराव को मग का प्रेरणा मिला जर महती मिला उपयोग करियर सा हो सकते यह उद्देशा पहले सेशन घत खूब लोग आवड़ बरस लोग मेरा नंतर ही प्रश्न विचार ले तर मला वाटते दुसरा इम्पॉर्टंट एरिया आहे की क्लाउड कॉम्प्युटिंग सो आपण त्याच्याबद्दल बोलू माझं प्रेझेंटेशन साधारण तीस ते पस्तीस मिनिटात संपेल आणि दहा पंधरा मिनिटात आपण प्रश्न उत्तराला देऊ त्याप्रमाणेच मी प्लॅन केला आहे तर आता मी माझं स्क्रीन शेअर करतो आणि स्टार्ट करू आपण आता इंग्लिशमध्ये बोललं थोडं जास्त कम्फर्टेबल राहील तर तुम्हाला दिसत आहे का पीपीटी हो पीपीटी दिसत आहे ओके चला वेलकम टू दिस क्लाउड कॉम्प्युटिंग सेशन माय नेम इज अविनाश चिंचवडकर अँड आय विल टेक यू थ्रू दिस कम्प्लीट जर्नी क्लाउड कॉम्प्युटिंग दिस इज नॉट ए व्हेरी थेरेटिकल सेशन आय पुट लॉट ऑफ माय एक्सपिरियन्स अँड माय अंडरस्टँडिंग इन टू दिस so you can get all the information on the internet but uh, to there is so much information to extract the exact information and interpret it is also a big task so in that way I, you will find it helpful and at the end of this session you will at least have some good uh, understanding of what is cloud computing what you should do next to develop your skills and how it can help you to uh, switch over or you are enhance your career actually so let us start so these are the questions i am going to uh, cover in this session uh, this looks too many question but uh, don't worry we will be able to cover it so what are the so digital transformation this is the key word now uh, every company is going for digital transformations so what is digital transformation uh, what is the role of cloud in that what are the different types of cloud what are the types of offering don't worry about a lot of words are there so i will explain each of this what are the advantages of cloud computing what are limitations who are the major cloud providers comparison auto scaling is one interesting topic and i will cover that then how it is supporting overall a technology road map how it is helping in other areas also what are the major cloud components future of cloud computing then why should you learn cloud computing i think the last few slides are very interesting what are the different career types in cloud computing how you can develop skills how you can get certification which are the certification you should go for so i will try to guide on each of this area and definitely if time uh, we may not able to cover everything then we'll plan like how you can reach out to me and uh, bangalore marathi forum that we'll discuss at the end i will take some questions also so let us jump into the concepts so if you are working in the it industry uh, i'm sure you would have heard this word many times digital transformation so what is digital transformation there are some definitions i have taken and i have given the references also which source from which source i have taken this information so digital transformation is what is happening to organization so it's a new way of working innovative work way of working so you are actually changing fundamentally everything using the tools technologies it is a cultural change if you would have been involved in any transformation journey 
you will see there is a lot of resistance because it's not only the tools you are changing but it is the way of working the people are used to some kind of working but they, you are changing the way of working and that's why it is a more uh, useful and more effective there is another definition this is strategic adoption of digital technologies so it is not only technology so as i mentioned earlier it's actually change of culture it will improve your business processes uh, productivity deliver better customer experience and even employees will be happier that's what expected so it's a huge huge area digital transformation and cloud plays one of the very key key role in that that's why we should know cloud and then how uh, cloud computing is helping yeah so you can see that business are feelings it's urgency now and looking at the current situation it's more important to go for cloud computing because cloud computing we'll see that later we'll discuss what are the benefits it will help you to reduce your cost optimize your operation and you can actually reduce lot of expenses because cloud is more like as pay as you go like you pay whatever portion of the cloud you are using we'll see that in very detail uh, discussion and no need to think too much about this but cloud is most one of the important part of the digital transformation that's for sure it offers you flexible it resources that makes everything is possible like you can go to speedy time to market uh, you can actually change your business model you can do lot of experimentation and it it will actually help you your business you can achieve your business goals that's why you you must be noting noticing that most of the clients are now asking for cloud platforms and all the solutions at least i am working on every solution has a cloud component in that even if a client doesn't have cloud infrastructure they want to go to that direction that's why it is very important to learn cloud computing so what is cloud computing this is important i give on some definitions but i will try to explain in my own words so cloud is like you deliver the services on the internet so everything is on the internet so what you need is only internet connection laptop and internet connection and you can do anything so it is not only helping big businesses but even small businesses everything they can actually they host their website e-commerce website they can do their business on the internet very fast because all they need is internet connection and the uh, access to the cloud so cloud will not give you anything free it yet it will charge you but it will be based on your usage you can select the plan you can manage your cost it will give you feedback on everything it will guide you to how to which resources you should select so actually it is nothing but so earlier if you have been working in it industry for a long time you know how difficult it was to set up a server you have to raise a request you need to select the configuration you need to follow up with somebody somebody will manually actually get all the components to set up the server he will do manually all this uh, settings configurations it used to take at least weeks and sometime even month to set up a server simple server and the storage and everything now it is on the fly you can select just like a wizard they will give you you can select your configuration you can and it will go live in minutes that has that is possible now because of cloud it is on demand sir computing services everything is ready you don't have to wait you can add the even you have application you can add a more power to the processor you can add more storage everything you can do on the fly and you will be charged only whatever you are using you don't have to pay like earlier even that was one more disadvantage that you have to pay for everything even if you are not using it your server may be used only for two days in a week but you have to pay still full months rent for that so that is not the case now you have to pay only whatever you are using 
So you don't have to manage the data center. If somebody has seen a data center, you will know how difficult it is to manage the data center. The maintaining that particular temperature, security, physical security, it's a huge task. And earlier companies used to do that, but now it is not required. Somebody else will take care of that. So data center will be taken care of by all the big cloud players like Azure and AWS. And they will manage for you. Uh, they are responsible for the physical security, uh, virtual security, everything. You just use their services and pay the rent to them. So I've given some example from real life. It is almost like renting a house. They're very similar to that. Again, there's another uh, definition. Uh, delivery on departed source, everything from application to data center. And it's, you can start with a very simple storage you can get, just a storage, or you can get full-fledged servers, database, all kinds of databases are available. You can build very complex system now in the cloud. So I hope this is clear now, cloud computing. Uh, anybody has any question you can put on the chat window or at the end we will take questions also, that is also okay. So there are two type, uh, three, four types of cloud actually. Mm, the third one is not very common, so public cloud, private hybrid community. These are the basic types of uh, cloud platforms. So public clouds are owned by uh, big companies like Microsoft, Amazon. And they own the data center, they manage the data center infrastructure and they just provide you like services and the resources. So you want some, you want to host your website, you just purchase a web server, VM or a web server instance they will give you like based on your requirement, they will give you and they will only charge for that. So how they manage at the back end, that is not, you don't have to worry about that. So there are certain types of uh, clouds, we'll see that in some of the cloud, you have to manage most of the things. In some of the cloud, you don't have to manage anything. And the pricing will change accordingly. But one thing is sure, the infrastructure part, you don't have to worry about the failure like earlier if there's something some failure like some machine fails you have to follow up with the infrastructure team you have to get it up that was a huge task now you don't have to worry about that availability is their problem the cloud provider will ensure that machine is available uh, around the clock so this is public cloud and this is what mostly use and this is i think we should focus on mostly Private cloud is more like as a, as if it is like on premises. So it is used by only intranet on the selected users. It is not available for general public. It's called internal or corporate cloud, private cloud computing gives. It's more like more secured. Uh, so some companies, they want to go for private clouds because they want, it's like virtually it should be separate. So they, they prefer this kind of cloud. And then there is hybrid cloud. So some part of the application is in the, uh, on the on-premises on, on the private cloud and other part is on the public cloud. So that is also possible. So this kind of hybrid arrangement is also possible. Community cloud is very uncommon, but if you have seen universities, no? many universities share the cloud actually, the data information, like learning uh, uh, resources, they will share with each other. Our healthcare system, they will also have some kind of their own cloud where general uh, people cannot access that. Uh, it is more sacred than the public cloud. So this is also one of the type of cloud. I will give some uh, real life example to understand this concept. I'm assuming that most of you are familiar with cloud, but still just if somebody's not heard about cloud, I will give example, what is public cloud? So, so it is very similar to public places like cinemas, restaurants, hotels, 
where you anyone can go and avail the facilities after paying nominal charges or like what are the charges they specify you will pay that actually for the movies if you go you will have to pay for the ticket restaurant you are going whatever you are consuming the food you are ordering you have to pay as per that and then you go out that's all you don't have any responsibility of cleaning the utensils or the place or nothing like you don't have to worry about that so this is like a public cloud now private cloud you can compare with your own house so you you and your family members only they can use so you know hotel anybody can go and they can have food but here only your it is restricted to you and your family and maybe your guests sometime then you prepare your own food and consume it it's very private no hybrid is like uh, service apartment where you you have kitchen you can do cooking also in your room if you want but at the same time you can order the food outside or you can go to the hotel uh, reception uh, restaurant also and you can have food there it's more like a hybrid you have the option community is like shared cafeteria between the companies if you some of the it parks we see that there is a community kitchen like you cafeteria shared between companies anybody from few companies like it's not for a, any company only between few companies they share the cafeteria and you can go just pay the amount and you get the food so it's like that actually so now i think it will be much more clear with this examples somebody has asked some question okay thank you uh, yeah example this i thought like we should have some simple examples so if somebody is not familiar uh, let me see what happened my screen is freeze now okay yeah public i given this examples and now uh, yeah another big important concept is yeah so there are few words keywords actually you should remember those i will come to this slide later actually let us see the the two slides and then we'll come to this so lowest le level up so there are three types of important uh, type of clouds one is infrastructure as a service second is platform as a service third is a software as a service so lowest level is infrastructure as a service i given some example also with that i will explain you uh, so what it does is it just give you borben like a all the everything they will give you like space virtual machine you deploy your application you do deploy your database they will just give you the compute computing resources like servers storage the raw space like raw computing power so every uh, provider like aws azure google ibm cloud they provide you this kind of just a raw infrastructure so like a machine if you remember earlier days we used to ask our infrastructure team to set up one machine and then you set up your server your application java you set up, install on that dot net you install so windows also you 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 have to install it. here there will not be windows i think operating system now they are giving now it is basic uh, linux or windows but apart from that there will be nothing so this is the uh, safest option because this doesn't have any less vendor lock in so you had only machine there is no software in that you can select the software second is platform as a service so this is this is next level uh, so this will be minimum cost will be there actually in this the first one the is infrastructure as a service second is platform as a service so actually it will give you a lot of things for example it will give you middleware database it will give uh, it will give web server application server based on your requirement it will also give dotnet java whatever you want so it will be more like a configured environment so you have to just develop your application and deploy it there so it is the next level of offering here you have vendor lock in because they are providing you most of the things only your application you are developing so and this will be a bit more expensive than the first option uh, is actually pass will be more expensive third is a software as a service 
here actually the cloud provider is giving you everything you don't have to do anything you just write your code or you configure many times it will just configuration if somebody has work on sharepoint or salesforce they will know like there is very less code they have to write most of the thing is configurable they are given you widgets they are given you web parts you just develop using that so less coding actually very less coding this is called software as a service and this is has maximum vendor lock in because you are using only their features you cannot port it to another cloud and maximum vendor lock in and the cost also will be maximum because you are getting everything ready made i have some good example i will give that example and then we'll go to that slide diagram <coughs> again this is my own example <coughs> so is infrastructure as a service is like a renter renting a unfurnished house it is like just you rent a house there is no furniture empty space you go there you buy your own furniture equipment rent will be less because there is nothing in the house and then you have to if you bring some furniture it is your responsibility to maintain it the premises and the furniture everything you are you are responsible for managing so rent will be less but it will be difficult to vacate also it's very similar to what i explained earlier like because you will be bringing everything so if you have to move out you have to move out everything so a bit difficult to vacate but le less rent now the pass platform as a service is like a furnished house sometimes you get that, that option also so bangalore we are used to this kind of also arrangement where you get a furnished house so you have all the needed basic furniture you will you may have sofa you may have dining table some chairs the rent will be little higher you can bring in you, if you want some extra furniture you can bring it nobody will stop you the owner will take care of whatever furniture he has given so freeze if he has given freeze he will take care of that but if you are bring some your own furniture you have to take care of that so here rent will be a bit higher compared to the first option furnished houses are a bit costly so pass is like that only and this is also easier to vacate because you don't have any lock in like you don't have much responsibility you can take your own furniture or whatever your stuff you can vacate it anytime now that uh, this is platform as a service software as a service is a, uh, like again this is like staying in a service apartment so everything is taken care you don't have to bring anything all furniture is there cleaning is there they will come and clean everything replace the mattresses everything they will do this has high strength because you don't have to worry about you just bring your bag and you stay there but this is easy to rent and vacate because there nothing you are owning here and uh, yeah rent will be a bit higher here because you are getting everything ready made so this is i think the analogy with uh, this type of uh, cloud platforms i will now go to that uh, complex picture now it will make sense so if you see the earlier uh, on premises we have worked for many years on this uh, the left hand side the model where everything you have to manage application data runtime middleware os virtualization servers storage so we we used to have a dedicated infrastructure team and they will manage everything for us now that time has gone now now we have come to the next is is if you see here so the cloud provider will manage most of the thing networking they will take care storage servers virtualization lot of thing they will take care only you have to manage even os now they are giving by default actually so you have to manage only application data runtime environment like java you need dot net you need middleware if you are using something tipco or anything that you have to manage your responsibility has reduced actually you can see here next if you go to pass platform as a service you are only managing application and data rest everything they will be managed by cloud providers and if you go to the next saas 
i hope you are able to see this uh, but everything will be managed by the cloud provider you don't have to manage you just configure the functionality and you start using it so you can see the as you go from left to right it is becoming more easier to manage but at the same time you are also paying more money because most of the thing will be taken care of. it will not be given free to you they will be you will be charged for every service so i will talk to about that also how they charge most of them charge per minute per minute uses actually so this is how this four types of uh, three types of cloud um, platforms are there actually and these are very key concept it is very important to understand this key concept anybody has any question now, till now let me see if i can before we go to next okay yeah i think there's no question as of now yeah so we have seen this yeah now what are the advantages why do we go for this cloud company first of all if you are managing the cloud infrastructure there's a lot of headache for you first reliability like it should be up and running 24 by 7 that's it will be used as so somebody has to be there to monitor if something happens some flood is there earthquake is there you have to then it is a big problem for you actually so all this headache is gone reliability is the biggest advantage because they they know how to manage it. microsoft and amazon they are expert in that and they have that kind of what is a uh, support like they have the employee and then infrastructure to manage this so they will definitely manage better than us so the reliability is much more higher uh, very rarely the cloud platform will go down it's it's very less chances actually availability 99.95 they are claiming azure is claiming which is i think very good so downtime is almost like null so your application is much more reliable scalability is possible like earlier if you have suppose your cpu can scale up your storage you can scale up earlier it was quite difficult now if you want to scale up you have to raise a request they have to procure the part they will uh, scale up your cpu that used to take uh, weeks now it is on the fly you can uh, upgrade or downgrade both is possible even auto scaling is possible where you can actually define that a week days my capacity should be maximum like and the weekend it should be lowest that is also possible auto scaling is possible you can i will talk about that you can set up some rules time to market we are discuss and it is easy to develop application if you can do, do in hours actually you can deploy your application in hours it will go live security is much better because they, they are managing at the high level that that scale so they will manage is better than us data security is more there is no data less loss even if there is some failure they will take care of that they will have backup uh, geological backup also they will have sometime cost saving is definitely there because you are paying only for whatever you are using manageability is easier because you don't have to manage the infrastructure part you have to just manage the application part disaster recovery uh, as i said uh, geographic backup they, they they will maintain so in, even if something is wrong in one place like chennai has having some issues they will restore the data from mumbai likewise in countries also different countries you can specify so your data will be always safe your application will be always safe and cloud providers give you the last point strategic value because there are a lot of technology which are being uh, offered in the cloud only particularly this deep learning and all those kind of models if you want to run you cannot run it on locally so cloud gives you that kind of infrastructure where you can use all these innovative technologies iot they are giving lot of studios and those kind of infrastructure they are giving so you can build a iot application very easily in cloud if you want to do it in a locally it is quite difficult yeah there are some disadvantages you, you always need a internet connection but i think everybody has a internet connection now that is not a problem now 
bandwidth can be a problem but nowadays we are not seeing that is a big issue vendor lock in is always there this is only one of the biggest problem tomorrow if you are your application is on azure if you want to move it to aws it's not that easy because you there you have to move most many of the things actually so that's why we there is a concept called cloud neutral i will talk about that so that that pattern is coming now so you develop such that it is it can be ported to any cloud platform next is like limited control sorry 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 oh. limited control yeah but that doesn't matter actually so you don't know where your servers are your data is how, how is they are managing but you don't have to worry as long as it is available and it is secured you don't have to worry security they say some of the companies they have strict rules that they don't use cloud particularly this payment companies payment gateways or banking they still have some apprehension like they don't use cloud because security still they are not very sure about that so this can be one of the negative point but most of the application you can develop and there is a lot of security like you can have virtual private cloud vpc they call which is like almost like having your own network nobody can access that uh, last point is skilled resources you need a definitely some skilled resources and that's why we should learn so working on cloud requires some kind of uh, special skills knowledge about the cloud platform and th that is that is a limitation and that is also opportunity also for all of us now who are the cloud player big cloud players so amazon is always it has been the oldest cloud provider 2000 i think 7 or something and this is not complete so it is the oldest player and it is the biggest market share amazon has amazon web services aws they call it it has millions of active customers thousands of partners it's very flexible secured scalability is high you ask for anything in cloud computing and you will find out in azure uh, uh, aws pricing is per hour but i am doubtful about this i think they would have also change it to per minute now next is the uh, microsoft azure and it is catching up with uh, aws now almost it is almost uh, equal now because microsoft has a wide range of reach already like their applications are running everywhere so using azure makes it easier actually to go for cloud and azure also provides similar kind of services almost server software networking analytics pricing is per minute prices are also competitive you know there is not much difference uh, now the next third cloud is google cloud this is coming this is actually the newest of this lot but it is making a good uh, progress particularly it is good for machine learning and deep learning so they are they are providing lot of apis in this area so for uh, big data solutions machine learning deep learning many companies are going for uh, google cloud so these are the three main players ibm is also has its cloud oracle has its own cloud but they are bit uh, limited oracle particularly is more on their enterprise applications more like saas ibm also has bluemix Uh, some some companies are using bluemix but uh, these three are the top leaders so i think it is best to focus energy on these three uh, cloud providers so auto scaling i spoke to you about that so this is very interesting offering given by clouds so you can actually decide uh, rules you can uh, define like if your cpu usage is above 50% you can add one more node like that rules you can set up you can add one more instance time based like uh, so based on the your time like weekend you can actually cut down your resources that is possible weekdays monday you can actually scale up your resources that is all possible <coughs> sorry so based on cpu usage 
weekends, holidays you can specify. So you will be using the minimum configuration and you will be charged only for that. You will scale out whenever it is only required. So even custom matrix you can set based on your checked out items on in your shopping cart. So all this kind of <clears throat> complex rule you can write. Write means you don't have to write any code. It's all configuration. You can just select those rules. So this is mo most important and useful feature of the cloud computing. <clears throat> so just to give what are the different type of components cloud is giving us. Just I put one picture. So they give you compute resources, cloud services, service fabric, batch processing you can do, web apps, web and mobile. Other web apps you can de develop, mobile apps you can develop. Logic apps is for integration. This is Azure picture actually. API apps you can develop. IoT and analytics you can do a lot of things. So data processing, earlier we used to have ETL. So ETL is now actually getting replaced by all these uh, new data pipelines, data factory and all these things. Storage, it will give you storage. Databases, it will give developer services also. Visual Studio, if you see, you don't have to purchase, like you don't have to install on your laptop. You can use it on cloud, cloud itself. You can develop in cloud, deploy it on cloud and uh, publish it on cloud. Everything is you can do in cloud. You don't, you just need a laptop with internet connection. That's all. <clears throat> These are the key uh, components. Yeah, this I think comes to, we have come to one logical stop before going to future computing. I will just check if there is any question till now. How to select cloud supplier? Yeah, based on uh, Rohan has asked question, how to select cloud supplier, whether they have a specialization. Yeah, as I told you, some things are very clear. Like if you are going for, <clears throat> it depends on many things. How is like your current application portfolio? So if you have a lot of Microsoft application, .NET applications, it's better to go for Azure because you it will support most of your functionality. If you are Java application, for example, now Azure is also giving Java virtual machine, but as AWS is more supporting to the Java applications. So based on your current uh, uh, application portfolio, what type of applications you have and what kind of application you want to build. So you want to build deep learning model, then you have to go for only Google Cloud has the best offering for that. And what I have seen is uh, based on my experience, cost is the most important thing. So first thing you, you should consider is cost because you are only developing the application, but the client who is going to use it, he is going to pay for that. So you should do a cost analysis first and then select the cloud supplier. So there, there is a process actually for going to the sub, selecting the supplier. Uh, I mentioned some of the points, but there are many things you should consider. Okay, I will go to the next slide. So now what is the future of cloud computing? Definitely cloud is here to stay. It is not like <clears throat> something which will go easily or which will change easily. Cloud is going to stay here. And it's worth to learn this uh, technology because it, there's no option like uh, Data science, at least I, I took some session on that. Data science, you have option. You, if you want, you can go to data science area. But cloud, there's no option. You have to know cloud actually. There will be, everything will be on cloud in few years. So it is most important to learn this. So in cloud also, it is evolving now. Uh, there are some things I told you, serverless computing. So you, you don't need server, you just, uh, you can write Azure function is there, AWS Lambda is there. It's more like uh, you just write the code and it will execute. You don't need a server for that. So that is a big thing that will come in future. Interoperability, how you can actually port your services, your data application within the cloud. That is always a big thing that will happen in future. Right now it is not possible. 
there's no interoperability you have to migrate actually and there's not a small effort it is huge effort edge computing is another concept where you do the processing at the edge so if you have some iot device you collect the data instead of sending it back and forth to the server you do the processing there itself so that response will be fast so this is a totally new concept that is still evolving uh, we don't know how it will be in the future cloud neutral is definitely most important and that is that is the near future actually so microservices if you work on microservices uh, docker and kubernetes you can develop in any language deploy it in azure or you can just pick up pick up that code and you deploy it in aws it will work so that's how the cloud neutral uh, concept is there cloud foundry is one of the biggest uh, advocate of this and many companies are now going towards this uh, direction using microservices i will not talk about microservices because it's a totally different subject uh, it's a huge uh, subject uh let me go through quickly next few slides then we'll take questions okay while well, on cloud cloud computing i said many of this thing but it is not uh, optional now it is actually mandatory if you are working in the it industry you should know cloud computing because most of your work will be migrated to the cloud you will be doing development in the cloud any type of cloud some cl form of cloud you will be using so definitely there is a demand for cloud computing professionals and it will grow in the future higher earning potential will open door to better paid job and current situation it is very important to learn some new skills uh, you can either save your job or you can find out a better job yeah improve job prospects in all industries set yourself apart so cloud whoever knows cloud he will be respected more your job will be more secured nobody is secured nowadays but you will be comparatively more secured because you have a different skill you have different knowledge than others it will build your trust with your employer and get recognition all this thing will happen build a competition for your next job yeah so basically it is good to learn uh, skills in the early stage of your career so there are lot of skill development uh, programs certifications so amazon itself they have lot of trainings they conduct some certification also they have some exams better to learn from the provider itself that's my ad advice like microsoft azure also they also have certifications and a lot of material is there in both this even google also uh, they have a lot of training material document certification they conduct so once you decide what you want to learn then you can use their own resources and most of them are available freely unless you join their paid courses they have paid courses also then udemy has uh, some good courses on that coursera edx linkedin also cloud academy you will see many resources if you want to learn there is no shortage of information you can actually get all the information on the internet now so what are the different roles so cloud engineers developers cloud solution architect so cloud solution architect has to know many more things actually than the normal solution architect he has to understand how the cloud works what kind of matrix you can collect from the cloud how to collect it devops is another big area so developing like writing code is not that difficult but deploying it making it work reliably and consistently is a big task so devops is a pipeline you set up a pipeline like you if you write some code it will get deployed to the pipeline cloud support engineers that is also huge potential and it may not be the platform support but your even your application support 
Security is a big area. So cloud security, how do you ensure that your application is secured in the cloud? There are some guidelines, standards we have to follow. So this is a big area. Uh, cyber security anyway is a big, uh, again, a good area actually to think about. It's had a huge potential. Testing, testing also is not as, as similar as earlier we used to do. So the testing person who is working on cloud application, test engineer, he should know many more things. He should also understand how cloud works, how to troubleshoot, how to, because it's not like you will see the log and all earlier we used to see. So how do you troubleshoot the issues? Cloud admin. So cloud admin here is a role is different. He, he doesn't have to manage the infrastructure because uh, we discussed it is managed by cloud provider, but still uh, setting up the resources, applications, uh, rules, that also requires some skills. So cloud admin is also a hard job. Cloud application monitoring, monitoring the cloud application. Though it gives a lot of thing, uh, it gives alerts to you, all kind of indication it gives, it's much easier, but still you need to monitor your application. If it is a mission critical specifically. So there are many job roles. I just copied from one of the page to show you like what kind of jobs. So if you can go to LinkedIn and check, you will see many jobs related to cloud. Yeah, I think that's what I came to end up my presentation. Now we can take questions. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a really uh, nice information. And uh, personally, I love those examples. <laughs> yeah. uh, why it, uh, we can relate those to our life and yeah. uh, learn from that. So thank really you. wonderful. Thank so, you. Okay, thank we'll move on to the questions now. Yeah. Uh, so yes, like questions, uh, queries regarding cloud computing or whatever information he has shared. So just the chat box uh, yeah Rohan has asked already one question what size of servers clouds suppliers are? so you get all kind of configurations like you start with uh, uh, like it will you it will ask you everything what kind of CPU how many CPUs you need what storage you need so everything you can configure it is almost like a wizard like a shopping card no? you go to Amazon and you just do shopping it's almost like that if you don't mind, I will open one Azure cost calculator. You can take a look at that later on. I will show you. That's a good question, actually. So Azure, it is more like a shop, shopping cart only, price calculator. You can, before even you purchase, you should take a look at this and understand like what will be cost, whatever I'm proposing. So if you go for virtual machine, for example, virtual machine is where you, and you can try this actually, there's not no cost for this. This is all free. You can just select some applications and then you'd see the cost. I don't know what is happening. It's not selecting. Yeah, but this it is like this. You go to Azure cost and you will see all the kind of configuration actually very low end to very high end and you just select it. Okay, uh, there's the next question. PG deploy and cloud computing. Okay, that's good actually. But try to get some exam uh, experience also. See how you if you can do some internship or some project. Certificate course, definitely you sh if you, I don't know where you are doing the PG diploma, but if you get a certification from AWS or Azure, that makes a lot of difference. Try to do certification, I will uh, advise it. Freelancing, I'm not, I'm not aware of that, but because uh, it is like giving you access to the company's infrastructure, no, net, applications and all so mostly uh, security will be issue actually getting freelancing into that but if you are an employee of some company all the uh, there's a second question which companies are leaders in cloud computing except it 
So I told about Microsoft, Amazon, Google. These are the top players. Then IBM is there, Oracle is there. Uh, next question is on which, as a beginner in which cloud computing, which course you recommend, AWS or Azure? Both are equally good. Both have good uh, documentation. Take a look at both initially, just documentation. Try to every, uh, yeah, one important thing is all this cloud provider will give you free account actually. At least for a few, one, for a month or some. Google at least gives actually for a year almost free trial membership. So you can create your account uh, and then you can try uh, this cloud platform and decide which one looks easier to you. Uh, but only just a word of caution, like it will ask you for your credit card details when you register, no? So whenever you are sure, then only you create your account. When you want to start it, just wait for, if you want to use it next month, then don't create your account now. Wait for next month and you start because your accounting will start from the day you registered. So if you are 30 this time, you utilize it uh, maximum, like fully. I'm doing course from Manipal University. I'll be getting certificate from AWS. That's good. Do I have to go for any, which certification? It depends on what kind of certification because there are uh, AWS also there are associate certificate. If you have seen this cloud practitioner, solution architects. So what kind of certification you are doing? You, you, you have to decide on that. Get the next level of certification. Some of the question, maybe it is not possible to answer here. You can get in touch with me later also. I'm a part of the BM group also, what's our Telegram group. You can reach out to me or you can reach out to Kapil and he, he can actually connect you with me. Any other question? Thank you, sir, for answering those uh, questions. Azun uh, Kunala, a question ahead? Okay, I guess Atha Nasildari in future, once they uh, dig into what is cloud computing and once they start learning or reading about it, they yeah. might uh, come across a few questions. Definitely. Okay. I guess then Kunala question, Nasildar, we can end today's session. So uh, once again, thank you very much, sir, uh, for this uh, uh, very useful information. And he, yes, uh, to tell you all, today is the 50th session of this BM Each One Teach One. And I really want to congratulate all the trainers, uh, like from day one, uh, who have uh, started uh, giving this, delivering this session, and all the participants as well, whoever are joining in and uh, taking uh, knowledge. Uh, from this session so really appreciate like on the trainers part it's uh, very uh, kind of them they are spending their time uh, because time is very valuable and uh, the participants as well for attending the session yeah. so I guess uh, we will close today's session so thank you very much sir thank uh, you thank you Kapil and for joining in. I'm very happy that this is a 50th session I'm able to conduct and thank yes. you Bangalore Marathi and uh, your team and you for this giving me this opportunity thank you very much thank you very much sir thank you thank you so upon i take session close career so thank you sir good night bye okay, thank you thank you all good night bye, good night. bye.